Lord is in this place. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. One thing that John had the revelation of was that he was the disciple whom Jesus loved. He had a revelation that Jesus came to die for him and he came to die for you and for me and he had that in his heart and he knew it and that's why he could say, I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. And that's what we need to get into our hearts today is that we are the disciples whom Jesus loved. God gave me a word and he just wants you to know that you are not forgotten. Come to the well. You are not forgotten. Come to the well. And I've been praying for each one of you. And I might not know your need, but I know somebody that knows your need. And I believe with all of my heart that he came to meet your need tonight. You are not forgotten. The enemy so many times, he sows lies in our minds that God has forgotten us, or he's looked over us, or he's not there anymore, or you might just not feel his presence, or you might be in a dry season of your life, but he has not forgotten you. Come to the well. I'm going to be coming from the book of John today. John chapter 4, verse 3 through 10. John chapter 4, verse 3 through 10. And while you're turning there, I just want to give you a little bit of background about the book. Um, the disciple John wrote the gospel, and he is known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. The gospel of John is a unique gospel. It's not one of Matthew, Mark, or Luke. It's not a synoptic gospel. It was unique in the way that John had an intimacy with Christ like no other disciple had had. And that's the depths that Christ wants to bring us to. Yeah. Where we can lay upon his chest and hear the heartbeat of God for us and for our family and for the body of Christ and those around us. He was an eyewitness of the things that Jesus had done. He ate with Jesus. He walked with Jesus. He talked with Jesus. He touched Jesus. He sat with Jesus. He slept where Jesus slept. He seen him do miracle after miracle after miracle. And the same God that was doing miracles then wants to do them today. He wants to move in the same way and even greater. He said the latter will be greater than the former. And we need to believe that. We need to believe that God is going to breathe again on the church of Jesus Christ and dry bones are going to get up. We have to believe and continue to believe that we serve the same God. And he's willing to do it for us as well. He heard the call and he dropped everything. And he went the way that Jesus wanted him to go. God calls us away from some stuff. Yes. He calls us out of some things. And some things we don't even want to let go. That was his way of life. That was his very livelihood. He was a fisherman. And he had to drop his nets and go with Jesus. And that's what, do you count the cost? He count the cost. He knew that going with Jesus was going to be so much more precious than whatever he had to hold on to. So if you're hearing the call tonight, if you hear Jesus calling you, let go of whatever you're holding on to and go with Jesus. Because what he has for you is so much greater than anything else you could obtain on your own. Amen. The book was written to Christians around the world. So it's written to you and to I. So I thought that was unique in itself because the other books are written to Jews and Romans. This book is specifically speaking to universal people. So Christians around the world. And this book, John's book, its um, purpose was to behold your God. Mm. 
And I believe that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to behold our God, to behold his beauty, to behold his majesty, to behold what he did like Nia was singing upon the cross. He made a way when there seemed to be no way. He will make a way for you in the wilderness, in your circumstance, whatever you are facing, he will make a way. All you have do is set your face towards him. Set your face towards him and behold your God because he's going to move on your behalf as long as you're trusting in him and believing in him and it might look dark for the moment but behold your God because he's going to come through for you because you are his child. He believes you keep believing. Keep believing. Keep trusting. One step. Sometimes we don't even want to get out of bed in the morning. Okay? But just put one step front of the other one step in front of the other and behold your God and he will move on your behalf yes, yes. and one thing about John I thought was really cool and I usually bring it out in almost every message that I have because there was men and women of God in the Bible that were not afraid to be alone with their God God specifically took John and put him on the island of Patmos to give him the revel the book of revelations but he had to be alone with God. And how many times do we not want to be alone with God? That God puts us in an isolated place or an isolated situation. But you know what John got to do in that time? He got to behold his God. He got to know his God. He got to become intimate with his God. And God trusted him to the point where he revealed things that he didn't reveal to anybody else. And I want to be one of those people that God trusts me enough that I sit at his feet, that he can reveal himself to me in such a way yes. that I can behold my God. Yes. Amen. You, are not for, you are not forgotten. Come to the well. Pray with me. Father, I come before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. God, and I believe with all my heart that there are needs in this place that we've been crying out for a long time and the journey gets long and the journey gets hard and the fire gets hot God but you want to meet our needs in this place today oh God God you said come to the well it was an invitation you invited us to come God because you want to move on our behalf Lord I pray you remove every hindrance and every obstacle and the spirit of God can move freely in this place and there will be a shout of victory in this place oh God God that we will behold our God and then we will see you move chains will be broken hearts will be mended minds will be healed situations and family circumstances put back together hearts replenished and renewed and refreshed oh God our relationship with you revived God do it again do it again Lord and have your way in Jesus name amen we could have stayed there. John, <laughs> John 4, 3, it says, He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then comes he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to a place, a parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied of his journey. Yes. Jesus was wearied of his journey. Mm -hmm. Sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus say unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which I am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said to her, If thou knew the gift of God, and who it is 
who says to you, give me to drink. You would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. I want to talk to you today about the woman, the well, and the water. The woman represents us. The well represents Jesus. And the water represents the operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The woman, the well, and the water. Right before this story takes place, John the Baptist is having a discussion with his disciples and the Jews. And they're debating the age-old debate about purification and should we hold laws and rituals or should we live by grace and faith in Jesus Christ. And John goes on to prove through scripture and points them to Jesus. One thing that we always need to do is not even debate over this and that, but point them to Jesus. Keep pointing people to Jesus Christ. Just keep pointing them to the cross and pointing them to the blood and pointing them to the only one that can help them. Because we can argue about this and that until we're blue in the face, but keep pointing them to Jesus. John the Baptist did it, and that's exactly what we need to do. And he begins to prove through scripture, he that cometh is from above, and he is above all. Yeah. So he's saying he's above all man, he's above all humanity, he's above all. Point blank, this one that comes is above all. He that receives my testimony, he that receives his testimony, set his seal that God is true. And I thought this was pretty cool because it says in the ancient days, they would write a document, and if you agreed with the document, at the bottom they would set a seal on the document. But it was at the foot of the document. See, God's revealing himself to us. And as we bow down at the foot of the cross and agree with who Jesus Christ is and what he did at the cross, the Holy Spirit sets his seal of approval upon you, moves on the inside of you, and now you have a seal of testimony that Jesus Christ is who he said that he is. Amen. So he begins to prove this. He continues to say he's the giver of eternal life. This is right before the woman at the well. And I'm making a point because he was about to reveal himself to her. And they were having a debate before that over what was right and what was wrong. And they just said, just Jesus. It's just Jesus. It's only Jesus. He's the giver of eternal life. He speaks the mind of God. He speaks the word of God. He has the spirit without measure. Whatever you need, it's just Jesus. Jesus. He's just pointing them back to Christ. And then John places us right before this story. And this is the place that the woman had to come to is at a crossroads. He says, he is the giver of eternal life. And he who believes on him shall have life. But he who does not believe in him, the wrath of God should abide on him. So there's only one way or the other. There's no in between. There's no middle ground. You're either sold out for Jesus or you're going the other way. And it says if you do not believe on him that the wrath of God abides on you. And he, they're telling this right before he's about to come face to face with this woman who does not know him. The word here believe is pisteo. It says if you believe on the son you have everlasting life. Believe is pisteo. It means to have faith or to entrust one's spiritual well-being. And it's an action word in the present tense, and it means that it's a continuous, ongoing action. Believing isn't just, I'm justified, and I believe, and now I'm saved, and then I don't got to believe anymore. Believing is a continuous action every single day, every single circumstance. Are you trusting Jesus in your present circumstance? Are you believing him for your finances? Are you believing him for your spiritual well-being and trusting ones? If you're a father and you have a baby, the baby can't do anything on its own at all. The father has to carry the baby, take care of the baby, do everything for the baby. The whole well-being of that child is placed into that father's arms. And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Uh, you pay for the baby to feed it and everything. So 
So Jesus wants us to place our whole self, right, right. everything that we have in his hands, yes. that he would take care of us oh, no yes. matter what it looks like. Right. Are we believing? Yeah. See, believing is so much deeper than just believing to be saved. Yeah. Are you believing him every single step yeah. of the way? And I'm not preaching at you. I'm preaching to myself yeah. first. Because yeah. am I trusting him every single step of the way? That leaves a personal decision. Mm. You can be married. You can even I and I, we're best friends. But there are times that she has to make decisions and I have to make decisions and we can't ride on each other's faith. Mm. We have to walk this out on our own. And when we stand before the Father, He's going to say, What did you do with my son? Are you going to continue? Did you continue to believe in my son? Did you continue to trust Him for, for provision in your life? Are you going to continue to trust Him? Did you trust Him? And no one else is going to be beside you but you. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's so personal. Yeah. Yes, that's right. When he showed up on the scene with the woman, it was just him mm. and the woman. That's right. That's right. No one else That's good. was there. It says that the next part I have, it says Jesus' journey to you or to the woman. He was leaving Judea, okay, which was really, really south. And I had a map, but it didn't turn out right. So <laughs> bear with me. So it, Judea was like really, really south and Galilee was all the way up here north. Okay, it was 120 miles, and I don't know if anybody likes to run in here. I like to run, and I can only run probably about four miles. So 120 miles was a really long journey to get from point A to point B. But the thing was, is in the middle is Samaria. And the Jews did not like the Samaritans at all. And what they would do is they would travel and they would go on the other side of the Jordan, and they would go around Samaria, and then go back down to Judea. A straight shot took them three days. If they went around, it took them six. Mm -hmm. They hated them so much that they were willing to travel the extra three days to go around them. Wow. So for Jesus to say, I must needs yeah. go to Samaria. There was a need yeah. in Samaria that God wanted to meet and no one else was willing to go there. And how many times do we feel like we are the outcast or we have messed up and we have blown it so bad that nobody wants to be around us. Nobody wants to face us. But Jesus says, there's a need I got to meet. There's a woman I got Show them that I love them no matter what. Amen. And I believe Amen. this part of the story showed me so much. Because there are racial barriers in the church today. There's denominational barriers in the church today. There's economical barriers in the church today. If you come from this background or that background or talk this way or do this or preach like this or all kinds of different stuff. That people put on people, but Jesus was about to tear them all down. He was about to walk through Samaria and say, It doesn't matter. We're all equal at the foot of the cross. We're all bought with the blood of Jesus. We're all saved the same way. It doesn't matter. He was just going to tear it all to pieces. And they were half Greeks, so they were half Jews, and they were half Gentiles. And they worshipped false gods. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was going to show up and say, I am the real God. Yes. I am the living water. Oh. I am the one that you need to come oh. to. Oh. You've been wasting your time running around trying to satisfy yourself and your own lust and own desires and all these other ways. Mm -hmm. But I'm coming. Cool. I'm on my way. Whatever your need is, he's on his way. Must needs go to Patterson, Louisiana. Must needs go to Patterson, Louisiana. You are not forgotten. You're not looked over. He's on his way to meet your need. Continue to believe that. And all the lies 
that the enemy tells you that it's over. Yeah. It's not worth it anymore. What? Just doubt and unbelief and fear consuming us. Mm -hmm. We're human. Right. We're human and he knows that and he's not ashamed of our humanity. Yeah. So just get back up and yeah. keep on walking and keep on trusting and keep on believing him. Yeah. But stop. Stop listening to the lies. Yeah. Look back to Jesus. Um, stop allowing fear to paralyze us. Yeah. Get back to the cross. Keep believing in the blood of Jesus. Because the blood speaks freedom over you. The blood speaks victory over you. The blood speaks deliverance over you. The blood speaks healing over you. The blood speaks over your life. And that's what Jesus is trying to get to that woman. My blood is about to be poured out for you. I am the living water. I am all that you need. Come to me. Come to the well. I know all these other people are going around Samaria and everyone else, your family, your friends have seemed to forgotten you. But I have not forgotten you. I will travel through to get to where you are. Naya sung the song, Come As You Are. No other way. Just as you are. Just come as you are. He must needs go. He was pursuing the woman. Yes, mm -hmm. hallelujah. He is pursuing Amen. us. Amen. He is a God yeah. in pursuit. Mm -hmm. So Praise do God. not think Praise that God. he has forgotten you. Mm -hmm. Must needs in the Greek was Dion, and it meant a necessary binding. Mm -hmm. There was something in his heart, in his spirit, that was bound, that he had to go. And I ask that of me and you. I know there's something in my life that God is dealing with that I feel bound in the spirit to. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't always want to do mm -hmm. what God is asking of me to do. Right, right. And sometimes it's not comfortable right. to do what God asks us to do or go where God asks us to go. But there's a prompting in the spirit right. that binds us yeah. to do and to go and to help and to pursue, even to pursue him. Yeah. Yeah. Mary had the best place sitting at the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Are there times that you feel like he's calling you away with him and binding you in the spirit to him? And we just tend to go on yeah. with the day. Yeah, yeah. But he's in pursuit of you. Mm -hmm. There was no debate in his mind if he was going to go. There was no question. He knew that the soul of this woman was greater than anything else. Mm -hmm. And he was willing to take the ridicule mm -hmm. that it was going to take for him to go there. Going into that place meant everybody was going to look at him in a funny way because he was a Jew and she was a Samaritan. Are we willing to go? I know I'm called a lot of different things because of just being radical for Jesus. But that's okay. Because that one soul, yes. that one person, yes. Yes. that one person that does not know Jesus Christ, it's worth it. It's worth it. He's worthy and it's worth it. No matter what, it's worth it. And he saw that she was worth it. And he sees that you're worth it and you're worth it and you're worth it. He was in pursuit of you before you even knew his name. Amen. And then it says that he comes to a city of Samaria called Sikar, near to a parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. He made his way to Sikar. Sikar meant falsehood, where there was no truth. When the enemy or your own flesh or other people are sowing lies 
in your mind That's about right. Jesus and the plans that yeah. he has for you. Always meet it with the truth. Mm -hmm. Begin to encourage yourself in the Lord. Because, see, this was a place of falsehood. But God showed up in yes, the midst of falsehood, yes, in the midst of the lie, in the midst of the discouragement, yes. in the midst of the despair. Oh, this woman had went, already went through five husbands. Mm -hmm. She already had been through a lot. She already was walking. I'm sure she was downcast and discouraged and didn't even know what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. But in midst of the falsehood, God shows up with his truth, with yes. his life, with his life. And he will breathe on that place. And he will speak truth to you. That's right. That's right. And you'll be able to get up again. Always meet a lie with the truth and the lie has to go. It has to go. There's no other way. It has to go. So Jesus shows up here. Don't give up. Hold on. Hold fast. And this parcel of ground I thought was interesting was a place that Jacob gave Joseph and it was the land that the coming Redeemer was supposed to be born at. The very place where this woman was going to come face to face with her Savior was the very place that literally 4,000 years before was named the place where the coming Redeemer would come. Hallelujah. A 4,000 year promise. You think we've been waiting a long time for some promises? A 4,000 year old promise came to pass. And Joseph continued to believe. So you continue to believe for your friends, for your family, for your grandchildren, for your great grandchildren, for generation after generation that the coming Redeemer will make a way. He's going to show up. Because he promised that he was going to show up if we continue to believe. And Joseph did not lose heart and he did not lose hope and he held on. That's right. He held on. And the promise was fulfilled maybe way later. But I'm sure Joseph was praying. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Joseph was seeking the face of God. And it came to pass. Yes. So whatever you're waiting on. Whatever you're believing him for, know that it will come to pass. He has not forgotten you. Come to the well. I'm going to drive that home because that's what he told me. I have not forgotten you. Come to the well. Now this Jacob's well was nine feet in diameter. I didn't know any of this. And a hundred feet deep wow. Wow. and it was hewn out of stone mm. think of the process of getting that well nine feet in diameter and a hundred feet deep there was a chiseling process mm -hmm. that took place right. now we all know we're in the process right mm -hmm. there's a process that took place and it took a tool to give it that desired shape. Well, the Holy Spirit is also working on our behalf to chisel and to mold and to shape the desired way that Christ be formed in us. Yes, yes, but see, he doesn't want shallow Christians. Mm. Amen. He doesn't want surface Christians. Right, He's right. calling us to a deeper place. Mm -hmm. And it took work to get down to that deep place in yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And I'm not talking about our works. I'm talking about let him work. Yeah. Let him work on our behalf. Yeah. Not us working. But that takes some surrender, some letting go, some allowing him to do what he needs to do because he wants to take us deep. There are souls at stake. And there was nothing to pull the water up with. So there's nothing in our hands we bring. Simply yes. to the cross we cling. Oh, there was no nothing to bring the water up with. Mm -hmm. They needed something to draw with. Mm -hmm. 
Our faith gives us access to the throne of grace. Yes. We have access. So when the enemy comes in to tell you that you don't have access, you tell him by the blood of yes. Jesus, yes. I have access oh, to my Father's yes. throne. Yes. I have access to provision. Yes. I have access to freedom. Yes. I have access to deliverance. I have access to healing. Yes. I don't know about you, but I've been praying for healing for a long time. Yes. But I'm not going to stop believing oh, God. Thus on 
not by, on the well. Can I borrow this real quick? Are these connected? You can take one. off of all your nerves and all your muscles mm -hmm. and you become relaxed, oh, mm -hmm. peaceful and still. You're not moving, you're immovable, you're just resting. Mm -hmm. Sit down, settle down in Jesus. Yes. That's good. Let him work. Sit down, settle down, take all the pressure and all the worry and all the care and sit on the well. He is the source. And also, when you're sitting on something, you have to trust it. Like she had to trust that this chair wasn't going to collapse underneath of her. You need to trust the one that is holding you up. Trust the one that you're sitting down and settling down in. And you can trust him. Because he died on the cross for you. And he rose from the grave for you. And he already did it. Yes. Yes. So you can trust him. You can sit on the well. And it's going to hold you up. Just sit on the well. Stop working. Stop laboring. Stop toiling. Stop trying to do it all. Jesus did it. We need to do it too. Yeah. Just go sit on the well and let him lift all that care and all that burden and you're weary and you're tired. Just sit down in Jesus. Yes. And let him take care of the rest. You did a great job. I told you, I told you it wasn't going to be scary. You <laughs> Sit down, settle down on the well. Amen. He's the source. Yes. Sit on the well. But then he's got more for you. Once you sit on the well, you got access to something else. Yeah. You got access to the living water. Yeah. You got access yeah. to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. You got access to the one that can tear down strongholds yeah. and move mountains yeah. and change our mindsets and move on your behalf, move on your family you got access to the living water. Just sit on the well. But he only works within the framework of the cross. Holy Spirit can't move if you're trying to do it all yourself. So learn to just go sit on the well. And when you sit on the well and you're trusting and you're believing in him, in one day he can do so much more than we tried to do in a hundred. In one day one touch, one touch from the master, one touch of his hand, one moment in his presence can change your whole mindset. One touch from the master can heal your body. One touch can save multitudes of people. Amen. One touch from the master. And then it says in verse 7, There cometh a woman of Samaria, to draw water, Jesus says unto her, give me to drink. And I'm going to skip to verse 10. It says, Jesus answered and said unto her, if, you, if thou knew the gift of God and who it is who says to you, give me to drink, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. I want to point out two, a contrast. She came to draw and he came to give. Mm, that's good. She came to draw the water to try to work it out herself. But he said, I just want to give it to you. It's a gift. Mm. It's a gift. And that's how God works. Faith and grace. We don't have to work for it. We don't have to earn it. 
We're such a performance-based mindset. Mm -hmm. If we work this much or we look this good, then we'll get and we'll get. And that's not how God works. Yes, it's just a gift. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to work for your gifts for Christmas. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to work for your gifts for your birthday. They were just gifts that somebody that loved you wanted to give you. But then it says, the woman of Samaria. And later on in the story, we see that she's exposed. Christ exposes her to herself. And that's always the first step in what God is going to do with us, is he needs to expose us yeah. to us. Mm -hmm. And normally we don't want to see what God has to show us. Right. But it's needful. Because we need to know how desperate we are and in what kind of need we need him and he begins to show her it's later on the story it was way too long of a story to preach and he shows her she had five husbands and the one that she is with is now not her husband so he begins to show her her she's face to face with a holy god even though he was clothed in humanity he was still deity he was still holy. So he, when you come in contact with a holy God, you can't even help but to be exposed to you Amen. and to see what's in our hearts. Yeah. And that's okay because God doesn't show us those things to hurt us. Right. He shows us those things so that we surrender to him yeah. and he can raise us up and that the Holy Spirit can work in and through our lives and we become more like him. And for her to recognize her spiritual thirst, mm -hmm. there was a thirst there that she tried to fill with other things. Yeah. And there is a thirst in every single human, because mm -hmm. that's the way that God created us, yeah. that only he can fill, Probably that only right. he can satisfy. Right, right. So he came at a time in her life when she was broken and where she was distraught, and he said, okay, are you ready? Mm. Are you ready now? So many times we try to hold on things or try to even, even spiritual things, we can try to fill ourselves. I pray this much a day, and I read my Bible this much a day, and, you know, and different things like that, and they're all good things, and they all should, you should do, we should do those things. But not to satisfy. Only sitting with Jesus is going to satisfy. Only his presence is going to satisfy. He's only going to fill those places in our heart that even maybe we try to find at work or we try to find at different things. But only he can satisfy. Only he can take a dry well mm -hmm. and fill it up. Yes. Yes. She was a dry well. And he wanted to fill her with living water. Amen. And sometimes in our walk, we can get dry. Yeah. We can be in a dry season. And we don't hear God's voice. And that doesn't mean even mean that you're doing anything wrong. It means he's building faith. Mm -hmm. He's building faith. And he wants you to continue <clears throat> to trust him and to believe him. And I don't know about you, but at the Bible college, we've been playing for a revival. Yeah. God, revive us again. Yes, yes. God, touch us again. Yes. God, light that fire in our bellies yes. again. God, breathe yes. on us yes. again. Yes. God, let the river of water flow yes. again. Yes. We're believing you, and we want to see it like the book of Acts. Yes. We want to see people getting up out of wheelchairs. Yes. We want to see the blind and eyes healed. We want to see the deaf hear. Yes. We want to see multitudes and multitudes. When people drive by this place that they would sense the presence and the power of God and they can't help but stop the car. We want to believe that they're just going to keep coming in and coming in by the droves because you have the living water. You have the well in this place. You're believing God and trusting God in your own lives and it's going to come out because your relationship with Jesus when this is right, it's going to come out this way and people are and they're going to want it because you're going to have something that nobody else has. You're going to have the water of life. And you're going to be able to tell them where they can get it from. Yes. So keep believing him. Keep trusting him. And I kept asking the Lord, Lord, why did 
is you ask this woman to give you a drink. Like, I'm not, I'm not quite understanding why you would ask her to give you a drink. And I've seen it this way, and you might see it another, but I saw it as an exchange. Mm -hmm. It was her life That's good. for his. That's mm -hmm. good. Because she had nothing to draw with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She didn't really have anything to give him. That's right. Why would he ask her for something mm -hmm. when she didn't even have it to give? That's good. Yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. And that's why I said, nothing in my hands I bring. Nothing can we bring but simply to the cross we cling. Simply to the blood of Jesus. She was making the exchange of her life. She was giving him her life. That he would give his to her. There's nothing to draw with. He's pursuing. He might be pursuing in an area of our hearts and in our lives that we're not quite surrendering. But he's pursuing. Because he wants that river of water to flow in that area of our lives. He wants more of you. Mm. And sometimes we're like, God, I have no more to give. And then he asks for more. And he asks for more because he wants to make an exchange. Mm. When That's you it. give to him, he oh. will give you so oh. much oh. greater. Yes. And you will be spiritually stronger and stronger in the faith. Amen. Mm. Yeah. Stronger in your faith because you trusted him. Once she was a moral outcast and now she's a part of the kingdom of God. Amen. Think about that. Do you remember when you were saved? Once a moral outcast and now a part of the kingdom of God. I remember when I was saved. I remember the way I was. I lived in Atlantic City, New Jersey. No one would come my way anymore. I had burnt every bridge possible from family to friends to co-workers. I had nothing, nothing left, nothing at all. I was lucky I even had the clothes on my back. And long story short, but I ended up getting locked up and Jesus met me in jail. And then the chains came off. Okay? So he can meet you where, as I am. Shackles and orange jumpsuit and all. As I am, just as you are, just come to me. He was in pursuit of me. That's right. That's right. He was in pursuit of me. <laughs> Totally moral outcast. Mm. But he wasn't afraid to come through Atlanta County. He wasn't afraid. Must needs go through yeah. Samaria. He wasn't afraid to show up and show off in the light and say, I'm not ashamed. She might look like this now, yeah. but wait till you see her when I'm done with her. And he ain't done yet. So I'm getting excited to see what more he's going to do. Amen. Is he calling you deeper? These are some questions he asked me. Do you need revival for something that might be dead? Yes. Something that might be dead in our lives or in our families, in our hearts? In an area of your relationship with him, does it grow dull or stale at times? Has he just been silent? Do you need to hear him? Are we in a dry season? Do we need him to breathe into our families or into our church? Because I have something to tell you. He is calling us deeper. He is calling the body of Christ deeper. Yeah. And we need to count the cost. Are we willing to pay the price? Are we willing to pray the price? And that's a Pastor Borg quote. Are we willing to pray the price for others? Because he's calling us deeper. It says in the scripture that Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. No other man was willing to make contact with these people. But Jesus Christ was willing to make contact with them. And when he showed up, he gave them a gift. The gift of God was salvation. Nothing earned. It's a gift. 
and it's always by grace and faith. And who gave that gift? Jesus gave that gift. This whole story is literally the argument and, and John the Baptist pointing to Christ before. Mm -hmm. It played out right before their very eyes. Jesus was a gift to all humanity. And Jesus was giving you the living water that you would never thirst again. He says in the scripture, if you would have asked, I would have given. Mm. Think about that. If you would ask, I would have given. Don't get weary in asking. And don't feel like you've come too many times. Here I am again, Lord. Here I am again. Yes. Here I am again. That issue's still there. Here I am again. My family needs help. Here I am again. I need to change. Here I am again. I need healing. Here I am again. You said, ask, I shall receive. Knock, and the door shall be open. Seek, and you shall find. Here I am again, Lord. I'm standing on your word, because what you said is true. Here I am again, Lord. Here I am again. Come to the well. Here I am again, Lord. With the Holy Spirit operating in your life, you will grow. Amen. You will grow in the faith. You will be nourished. You will be replenished. Mm -hmm. You will have power. Yes. You will have power. Yes. You have been endued with power. Amen. So when you feel powerless, remind yourself that the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit, that rose Jesus from the grave lives in me and I have power. When that temptation comes or that discouragement comes or that fear comes, I have power because the Spirit of God lives on the inside of me. You have something that nobody else has. Use what you have. Yeah. That's like having my computer, and I have no clue what everything does on it, but it does a lot of stuff. <laughs> and I wish I knew what everything did, but it's like salvation. There's so much. There's a storehouse in heaven. Yeah. We have so much that God wants to give us, yeah. but we're using like that much of what he has for us. Right, right. But there's so much more. Yeah. There's so much more. He wants you to know that there's so much. You will be content. Mm -hmm. 
And just like Paul said, sometimes I'm like, Paul, how did you do it? Mm -hmm. But if you're in need, he can give you contentment. If you're on a mountaintop, he can give you contentment. If you're hurting and broken, and your heart has been shattered and your faith has been shattered, I'll share this with you in closing. I went through something really, really traumatic, and my heart was shattered. I mean, my faith, I didn't even know if I had it. Like, I didn't have anything left at all. And the Lord kept telling me, Angela, a bruised reed I won't break. And a smoking flask I will not quench. Yeah, probably Jesus. And he gave me this picture. And I could see myself. I don't really want to call it a vision, but I could see it. And I was in a hospital bed, and I was all broke up. Like, literally, everything was broken. And he said, just be still. And the thing that hangs above it, the um, ivy, he said, just let my spirit, just let my spirit replenish you. Just let my spirit nourish you. Just let my spirit build you back up. Just be still. Be still in the bed. Just be still. And I was like, wow. God's spirit will build you back up. He will nourish and replenish. And he is not ashamed to be called your God.